Well, for more on the bilateral ties between China and the Philippines, we're joined by Lucio Blanco Pitlo III, professor at Ateneo de Manila University. So let's start in terms of expectations for President Xi's meeting with President Duterte. What should we be looking out for? Well, uh, they have signed a pretty broad range of deals, uh, ranging from infrastructure to education uh, to agriculture. Um, similar deals were signed back in 2016 when President Duterte paid a state visit to Beijing. Uh, but the traction of some of these uh, projects were stalled largely because of administrative and bureaucratic delays uh, from the Philippine side, uh, the absorptive capacity, uh, the feasibility study, the procurement of the right-of-way. So hopefully this visit uh, by President Xi would uh, add further momentum uh, you know, to, to enhance the capacity of the bureaucracies of both sides to uh, hit the ground uh, in terms of implementing these projects. And it certainly was a broad range of topics, as you mentioned, whether it's cultural exchanges, the oil and gas exploration. Just how valuable is the China-Philippines relationship overall? Well, uh, it, it goes to show that, you know, this uh, comprehensive strategic cooperation uh, goes to show how much the relations have turned around in the past couple of years. Uh, there are still challenges, uh, including on the maritime issues, but I think uh, both sides, the leadership of both sides are trying to emphasize the cooperative aspects of the relations and trying to, to boost the, the, the confluence so where their interests converge from whether it's uh, infrastructure, it's investment, or even maritime cooperation for harnessing resources in areas that had long been under dispute by both sides and also by other claimants as well. So given that they ha there is this focus on cooperation, however, obviously both countries still have their challenges in working together. How do you see them addressing and overcoming these issues with this new era of better cooperation? Well, since 2016, both sides had set up a bilateral consultation mechanism. So this provides a high level platform by which both sides can raise issues uh, in relation to the West Philippine Sea or the South China Sea. Uh, on the ground, there's been a joint Coast Guard uh, Committee for Maritime Cooperation, and this addresses maritime emergencies. And uh, also in the past couple of years, uh, code for unplanned encounters at sea and hotline communications, and uh, of course recently, uh, more on confidence building measures. Um, there was uh, ASEAN-China joint maritime exercises, wherein both Philippines and China were also present. And uh, in the recent ASEAN summit, there was uh, multilateral guidelines for uh, unintentional encounters of military aircraft. So I, I think all of these things will contribute in dispute management and uh, improving trust and confidence uh, between uh, assets that operate in the semi-enclosed sea. Now, let's also look at infrastructure development. What sort of results have we seen from Chinese investment in the Philippines? And also, where do you see the Belt and Road impacting the Philippines? Well, uh, the Belt and Road Initiative, uh, particularly the physical connectivity aspect, has a lot of synergy with uh, Duterte's flagship Build, Build, Build program, which uh, aims to enhance spending for public works, which has suffered deficit uh, under investment for many decades. So um, the impetus to uh, enhance uh, investment in infrastructure will get a big boost from uh, regional connectivity initiatives, including this one being uh, led by China, the, the Belt and Road Initiative. But uh, again, uh, I think the Build, Build, Build is open uh, to partners more than China. Japan is also very much an active player in that. ADB, the Asian Development Bank, is also there, uh, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. And so uh, I, I think it's pretty much inclusive. And with a lot of this focus on trade during this visit, we obviously know that this is happening against the backdrop of more strained U.S.-China trade relations. What position does that put the Philippines in? Well, th there is some expectation that uh, increasing labor costs in mainland China and the onset of the trade war will um, push um, an increasing number of Chinese enterprises, especially on the labor-intensive sectors, to find uh, new production uh, outlets in Southeast Asia. And I think uh, Philippines can position itself to capitalize on that opportunity. So um, our investments in infrastructure can address our logistical and traffic constraints. 
and it, it can also boost uh, our competitiveness to attract foreign capital, uh, in this case, uh, coming from China. All right, thank you so much. Lucio Blanco Pitlow III, the professor of Ateneo de Manila University's Chinese Studies Program.